actual versus target charts are Excel charts which demonstrate the comparison between actual and target performance. Best uses for actual versus target charts would be a comparison among a group and how each performed versus his or her target, or a comparison of time periods for performance. So something like department budget achievement month over month. Let's look at our example data. We have some sales data here. We have the name, how much that salesperson sold for the month or whatever time period we're looking at, the sales rep's target for that same time period, and then the difference between the target and their actual sales. So for Janie, she had a target of 33,000, but she only did about 25,000 in sales. So she missed her target by 8103. So we're going to use actual versus target charts to demonstrate this data visually. And I have a couple of examples. The first one on the left here is showing these red, little red lines to indicate the target amount. So for Lucy, if I look at this chart, it looks like to be about 39,000 and I can verify that on my, with my actual data up here. Um, but the, her actual sales data is represented uh, with this column bar. And so we can see cl pretty clearly that she missed, whereas Matthew, you know, his target's way down here, but his sales are way up here. This chart over on the right is conveying almost exactly the same information, but just doing it in a different way. So for here, the target amount is actually a bar itself, but it's a transparent bar. And so the sales bar overlaps the target bar. And so when a rep like Lucy, for instance, does not exceed her target, the target shows up as a red color, or the, the amount that was missed of her target shows up as a red color. Whereas Matthew, we can see pretty clearly this green color here demonstrating his uh, sales in excess of his target. And then we have a color that's a combination of the, both the green and the red, and that indicates all the sales that were performed within the target amount. So let me show you guys how to go ahead and build these charts. We're going to go down to try it yourself, where we have some very similar but different data. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm just going to make this chart on the left. And I'm just going to highlight all my data, which actually I'm just going to highlight up to target. And then I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to recommended charts. That's just my preferred entrance into the chart area. Um, and the reason I like it is because it pulls up a bunch of charts for you. So if you're trying to fit, get, get a sense of what to use, if you highlight your data, then Excel will like give you some examples of what your data might look like. But I'm gonna, I know what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to go to All Charts, and I'm going to go down to Combo here. Now, what co the Combo chart per permits you to do is have a chart that includes two different types of visuals. So instead of doing just the line chart or just the bar chart, I can do a combination of the two, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So for my sales, I'm going to keep as a clustered column. In my target, I'm going to keep as a line. And I could plot them on tip separate axes, but it's not necessary here. So I'm just going to hit OK. And Excel gives me this chart. So if we look here, see, we see, see pretty clearly that this chart does not look like this chart. So how do I get from these little lines to a big, long orange line? So let's pull this down here and work with, a little, <laughs> work with it for a second. So I'm going to highlight the line. OK. So now I can see my line and I can see the names it's associated with and, and all the values. Then I'm going to double click it. Excuse me. Let me click off of here, then double click it. Because it was only it was only selecting one bar of the line and I wanted the whole line selected. So I have the whole line selected and then my format data series interface comes up. So I'm going to go over to paint, the little paint bucket, and then for and then it gives me the two options, line and marker. So under line, I'm going to go, it has, it defaults to automatic. I'm going to go no line. So that remo removes my line. The marker, which is the little, usually dots or X's that indicate that where the actual value occurs and not the, uh, the inferred line. So I'm going to click on marker 
and I'm going to go to marker options, which is hidden. And the default is none, but I'm going to go to built in and it gives me all these little geometric shapes I can use. So here's my line. Okay. And then size, you can see over here, it's very small. So I'm going to make it like four times bigger. I'm going to type in 20 and hit enter. And now here's my lines. Okay. And then it get, does give you a, a border line, which is probably orange or gray or something. I'm going to go no line for the border. Uh, and then the, for my fill from this marker, I'm going to go down and we'll do find this bright red that I used for the original one. So now, now our charts are really looking, starting to look similar. So let's just do a little bit of formatting on here. Um, I don't, in this case, I don't feel like I really need a title. Um, and then over here, see I have all these uh, little gray lines in here to that represent my y-axis values. If I double click on this and I go over to format access and I click on the bars and then axis options, I right now it's given me a line at every this units major is given it's giving me a line at every five thousand, but I only want a line at every ten thousand. So if I do hit type in ten thousand and then hit enter. Uh, then Excel reformats it for me. And then you see I'm only going up to 40,000, but it's giving me 50,000. So I'm going to go to, up to where the, the maximum bound. I'm going to hit 40. Um, so now my, my chart looks a little bit more digestible. So that's how you go. That's how you build this first type of actual versus target chart. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on this other chart. So this one's going to be a little bit different. And again, we're going to have to be clever with our with our charts. So let's start off again with highlighting our data. Okay, and this time we're gonna to go to insert and we're going to go to recommended charts again. And that's my personal preference really, but you know, you don't, you can select a specific type of chart over here. And then I'm gonna to go to all charts and I wanna use a column chart. I'm just gonna use a standard column chart, which is the, the default chart for this type of data. I'm going to hit OK. So this time I'm using just a standard column chart. I'm not going to use the combo chart. You know, I want both of my data points to be uh, shown as columns. So what I'm going to do here, and you know, let's like take a look at this real quick before I get started. So see, I don't have any access, but I do have labels on my data. Um, so to get there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete um, the actual access over here. So if I hit delete, um, so now that's gone because I'm not going to use that. And then if I click on any one of these lines here, I can hit delete and it'll de delete my grid lines there. So now my chart's starting to look a little bit similar. Uh, again, I'm not interested in a chart title. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I, it's going to take us a couple steps. Um, so let's make sure data is in the right order. So we've got sales data in blue and then target data in orange. So let's select our target data. And we're going to do a couple things. So the first thing we're going to do is, again, we're in the format data series area with under the paint bucket. And I'm going to go down to, see, it gives me border transparency. I'm not interested in the border transparency. I want no line for the border, in fact. But for the fill, I'm going to do color. Is it here? So let's move forward here. I think. Let's move, let's go back here. So let's just start with the formatting of the columns first. So if I select the column and then if I, sometimes we, we go to format data series and we have this little column area here. And what, I'm, what I wanna do is I wanna have the, the columns on top of each other. And you accomplish that with the series overlap. Okay, so if I go all the way to 100, it basically, it, what it's overlapping all our data series 100%. So I don't want it quite 100% just yet. I only want it, you know, 70% just to give me a sense of what I'm looking at. Now, gap width is what it's you're going to be tweaking is the gap between the columns. So what happens when you make the gap smaller? Um, it makes the bars larger. So let's just keep it at 70 and 100 for right now. Okay. Um, so my sales bars, you know, I don't like this default blue color or say I want to change it. Uh, let's go to my green that I had and then definitely we're going to get rid of the orange and we'll make that I've got this light red color. So now it's starting to come into focus. So these are 
looking uh, quite a bit similar. Um, so I want on my sales data, I want the sale actual sales amount. So I know my green columns are my sales amount. If I right click on it and I go to add data label, and then it says add data label or add data callout, select add data label. And on top of my call, my green columns, the actual sales amount pops up. So now that's why I don't need the access anymore. So then we're going to click on my um, target um, columns, and we want to make those transparent. So if I click on the, the little paint bucket and I go down here to fill, and this was what I was looking at earlier. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing up. Right now, the transparency is zero. So I want the transparency. Let's start with the 80% and see what occurs with my, my columns here, my red columns. They've Now they're becoming transparent. So you can see the actual green column behind it. Whereas if I go back to zero, you cannot see any green. So let's just tweak with this. Maybe we'll go to 50-ish. And there we, there we go. So we have a very similar chart to what we had up here. And then just to finalize it, I'm going to go back to series overlap and I'm going to do 100. And really the reason I just keep that at 70 is so I can actually, it's easier for me to click on the charts to format them. So there you go. There's two examples of useful actual versus target charts. I would encourage you to do, try this yourself and to try to get your examples as close to mine as possible. Thank you and good luck with actual versus target charts.